Welcome, everyone. It's the Mike Tech Show, show number 891. Tonight, some more QuickBook solutions because that's what I've been dealing with. Some Outlook solutions, including an email that um, a, from a listener on uh, an Outlook warning. And then I'm going to start off with a couple interesting websites. And remember to check out the YouTube video because I'm going to dis- I'm going to you know display the sites and talk about them, and then finish up with some more listener email. So let's get started. The first website is let's display. There we go. So it's open source alternatives to a lot of different categories here. So let's say password managers. Let's click that. So we have Vault, KeyPass, XC, LastPass. Now I'm used to LastPass, but uh, Bitwarden, PassBolt, Buttercup. Never heard of Buttercup. AuthPass, Padlock. So this just gives you a little idea of, uh, let's go, documentation. We got Atom, DocuSaurus, AppFlowy, uh, ViewPress, Etherpad. There are lots and lots of software to explore. And maybe you'll find an open source option for this. And here we got product managers. So, again, this is open source alternative dot to and that'll be the first link in the show notes for tonight next i want to have some fun so this is image.meta.com and you have to sign in and you'll see i'm signed in you know with as 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 michael smith so what I have to do is you type a description and it will give you the graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste an alligator with sunglasses using a laptop wearing a Phillies baseball cap drinking a Mai Tai. I wanted him smoking a cigar but clearly they have a problem with smoking. So alligator with sunglasses using a laptop, wearing a Phillies baseball cap, drinking a Mai Tai. Boom. Let's it's thinking it's thinking and it's going to give us a few choices. And there we go. I actually like him. So if you look at the bottom, there's a, uh, there, there's a few and he's using a MacBook. And he's got his Phillies cap. He's got sunglasses, the alligator. And he's got a home Phillies jersey on. So I just thought that was so cool that you have to play with this. And this is image.meta. Yes, it's meta, but, you know, it, it is cool. If you need to, and you can download everything. So if you need some cute graphics... And if you click here, you download the image and you just pick where you want to download it. So I had to, had to show this because when I stumbled onto it, I started really playing with it and I wanted to know how far can I go? And I thought, you know, that's pretty good. Let's look at the other pictures. There's another one. They give you, they give you some choices here. So this is a good one. It's a slightly different Phillies cap, but you get the idea. And I, like I said, I wanted him smoking a cigar and it, it, it wouldn't allow it. So there are limits that you're going to run into, but play with that. Very cool. Okay. Had an issue with one of the bookkeepers who works remote into one of my client systems in the the accounting we call it the accounting desktop 
and she had problems with exporting to Excel from QuickBooks Desktop. And this was a new one on me, so I figured, well, show content. So to update first, the link that I have for tonight goes over five or six things. And this is how to fix the problem. The problem got fixed, unfortunately. I'm not sure which one fixed it, but we didn't have time. I just worked it out. So update QuickBooks Desktop. Absolutely. Did an update for QuickBooks Desktop. Check QuickBooks system requirements. We obviously passed all the requirements. I repaired Microsoft Office. This is an old version of Office. I repaired. This is the one I think really did it. Toggle the Windows user account controls. I run into software all the time that you have to disable UAC permanently. Now remember, if you search UAC, you'll get, and you can just lower the bar, and that's not all. You also have to go to the registry entry. I'll try to find that link. You have to go to the registry entry and change a, a one to a zero, and then save that registry key, and then you got to reboot. So that's the one that I think probably fixed this. Not sure. I also performed Windows updates. There were a lot. So I just threw the kitchen sink at it. And this is uh, great things to try. They want you to reinstall QuickBooks. I wasn't going to do that. That was my last, last ditch effort if I was going to reinstall QuickBooks or not. And I really didn't want to. And I'm glad I didn't have to. Okay. So this is interesting. I can't start Microsoft Outlook or receive the error. Cannot start Microsoft Outlook. Cannot open the Outlook window. So here is a few things to to try um oh, i didn't want to click on that let's see let's get back oh what's me to try i'm paused in the there we go this is what i wanted i wanted to scroll down here okay so i clicked on a link and it was to try it was the wrong link so Here's what I really want you to look at. At the bottom of this link, there's a listing of a bunch of things to try. Are you a Microsoft 365 for business customer? Let's fix this. And you download the support and recovery assistant. Then start Outlook in safe mode. I love this out option because it disables all the add-ins. And you know, if you do this and start in safe mode, where you just open up the run command and, and type Outlook, I always put .exe slash space slash safe. Then you have to pick your proper profile. That's always good because if it works, we know it's an add-in. And then you start trial and error and redoing the add-ins. Create a new Outlook profile. Actually, this is what fixed it for my client. So we just had to create a new profile. Luckily, it was Exchange hosted, so all the email was able to come down with no trouble. So that is one, repair your Outlook data file. Now, usually you'll get an error that it can't open a data file, and it will be very specific. And this is run the repair tool, scan PST. Here's an oldie but a goodie that I really like for some problems. And I had, I had to look this up once because I couldn't remember it. If the views get messed up on the left panel, you run Outlook with the reset nav pane. So slash reset nav pane. And that fixes 
the the view on the left hand side of Outlook. Check if Outlook is running in compatibility mode. And then, of course, older versions of Outlook may be out of support. Like I still have clients with uh, Office 2010 that they refuse to upgrade because it's working. And if it's working, well, they're not going to upgrade. All right. Next website. And this is from, oh, no, excuse me. This is, let's get to email here because this plays into Outlook and I want to, I want to read this. So this is from Carmack from Crosshaven Computers from Ireland. So and we also have a uh, email from Australia. So. Hey, Mike, hello again from Ireland. This is handy to know and might save you or someone time in the future. So he got this off of Microsoft. And this is, and we got a quote here from Microsoft. Got this from a customer who is using G Suite. I have told him many times not to use Outlook with it, but this information might help someone. And this is in quotes. We appreciate that you are using the new Outlook. While analyzing the issue description, I understand that you are not able to get drop down option for delay delivery. Please be informed that this feature is limited only to free email account and Microsoft Business Exchange accounts. And this option is not available for Gmail. Cloud Cash and IMAP accounts in the new Outlook app yet. By the way, to interject here, there's a lot of issues with this new Outlook app. I would avoid it at all costs. He, Microsoft continues, and I believe your colleague might be using free email account or Microsoft Business Exchange account. As you may know, the new Outlook is still in development stage. We have identified this to be a known problem in the product. This product team is aware of the scenario and they are actively working on it. At this point in time, we have no final date available as it is too early in the process. Hence, ETA is still unknown. Please make sure you keep Office up to date to take advantage of features, updates, as well as product corrections Thanks for bringing this to our attention. So just another reason to avoid the new Outlook app, Carmack. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. This is a link from Bill that he asked me, did I ever hear of this or do I know of anything about this? It's called Bleach Bit. And I just... I've never heard of it, and it's to clean your system and free up disk space. And I I wrote him back. I wrote Bill back and said, hey, I just don't know. And so I wanted to link a review from PC World. And one of the things I found that the – here's their verdict. You know, the pros, it's free, extensible, lightweight. The thing I was worried about, oh, is there any malware? Or it, it is okay to download. So I'm going to have the link for you and you can try it out. But home users might be better off with an established alternative like CCleaner. But if you're a business user looking to save, BleachBit is an excellent choice. So they also recommend here PC Decrapifier, which I... <laughs> I've talked about in the past and, and approve of. So you can read the review and read the, you know, take a look at the link for the email and certainly, you know, check it out. And let's continue with more emails here. And that was from Bill. Here's from Zrink, Zrinko. And it's about fabs. Now, remember, I talked about the problem I had with fabs. Well, guess what? Mike, I wanted to let you know that I had the very same experience you mentioned on a recent show using fabs. Two folders copied 
from drive C transferred, but they only contained empty subfolders. There were no files. That's exactly what happened to me. Luckily, this is my own laptop, and I still have the old one, so I can do this manually, but something is not right. I agree. If you need to copy non if transfer or copy whatever, non-standard folders from your system and you're using fabs, you must do them manually. You cannot trust fabs to copy those directories. It's not worth it. I, I told my story where that really impacted my client because I didn't double check. You have to manually do it. Okay. So thank you, Zrinko, for that. And let's go to Mick. Mick from Australia, from Melbourne. He was the one who kind of kicked off with the question of BitLocker. I was the Michael that sent you an email a couple weeks ago using, using BitLocker with a password. He typed Bitwarden, but he meant BitLocker. Well, just listen to your last podcast. Very interesting in the link to the BitLocker PDF, especially the TPN with a pin. I visited a number of sites and forums, and I'm happy with the group policy entries rather than the PS1 files I was looking at previously. I will do a full image backup just in case and then follow the bouncing ball. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, if it was my email that prompted it or thanks to your listeners. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Your email prompted the discussion, but it was, a, uh, I forget who, someone on YouTube posted a column, Mike, can you do a deep dive in this? And that's what kind of pushed me. And make sure to email me, MikeTechShow at gmail.com. Remember, YouTube is at youtube.com slash MichaelSmithMTS to get the videos. We're going to talk about YouTube in a minute before I wrap up for tonight. Uh, let's do the last email and this is for this is from the bill who asked me about the uh, uh what was that uh let me bring that up again that was uh bleach bit sorry so now let me continue with this email One of the things we did when nearing the end of the year was asking clients if they had extra money in their IT budget. I'll tell you, we've been so busy, we haven't had a chance to ask that of clients because we've been overwhelmed. I even had more systems I had to order yesterday uh, from Dell, and they're being delivered tomorrow already, So, which is great. If they did but had no immediate need, we would let them pre-buy the service for next year. Absolutely. that, and, and I agree with that and glad you're doing that, Bill. I don't think I sent this yet, but Hiron's Boot CD or DVD now has been updated to Hiron's Boot CD PE. And I'm going to have the download link for this that, that Bill provided. I had trouble getting the old one to do what I needed on a newer computer, and this solved the problem. This part of it, and I want to mention uh, the, the hard disk drive low-level format tool version 4.4 is a good tool if you get a bad virus since you cannot trust cleaning it. Uh, lots of great stuff. Hiram's Boot CD I have not used in a long time. There is a wealth of utilities that definitely you should have. I'm wondering, do they make it uh, on a bootable USB? I'm sure they do, or there's a way to do that because, you know, now, today, you don't see D CDs and DVDs on drives. So uh, I haven't went through the site. I'm hoping that there's going to be a version for the USB bootable. 
and there should be. Okay, so a few things, and especially with YouTube, and a, a shout out to a friend and longtime client. His name's Paul. He listens to the shows. We have set up a time where he is going to be a guest on my show. And he's going to talk about something I've never mentioned before of a story that involved his company. And he wants to share that. And I can't wait. And it's going to be January 11th. Paul will be on uh, via Zoom, and then I'll take the Zoom and show the broadcast. So I think you will definitely be entertained with this client story. So looking forward to having Paul on with me. We go back a long, long way, and he's responsible for the artwork for the Phillies, that the, the ones you can't see and the, and the peas behind me. He is... Uh, a dear friend of the artist in Philadelphia who does a lot of paintings. And uh, he gave me you know, at, at cost, we actually bartered some services and I am forever grateful for, for Paul doing that. So anyway, uh, some other things next week, next Thursday, no show. The next show will be Saturday, the December 30th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So that'll be the final show for the year for closing out 2023. Then the next day, New Year's Eve, join me. I will be live. Uh, no show content, but we talk tech and have fun and you can join on Discord and actually be part of the conversation or just sit back, relax and listen and on Twitch and on the in the chat room. But I will come on at 10 p.m. Eastern time and I will remain on for six hours and close out at 4 a.m. as we ring the new year in across all the time zones in the United States. I want to take this moment and wish everyone a happy and great Thanksgiving with your family, loved ones, significant others, just Have a safe and happy Merry Christmas. And I will hopefully see you back here for that Saturday show and possible. And then ringing in the new year. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for staying subscribed and downloading the show or visiting on YouTube. And by the way, the reason I thought of this and YouTube, my client friend, Paul, has been giving me some useful tips. And there's a couple more he gave me today on recommendations for YouTube for me. So I really, I really appreciate that. And if you see something that doesn't make sense, you're like, Mike, why are you not doing X, Y, Z? Email me, let me know. It's how I can improve. It's how we can, you know, yes, I've been doing this. It'll be going on to 19 years soon. But you know what? There's always something. I can, I learn something every day. And I learn something from all of you when you interact with me. So thank you, thank you. Have a great holiday. And see you back here for the next show on the 30th. Bye-bye.